The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says it's not a matter of if sea levels will rise, it's how much. The agency estimates over the next 30 years, the sea level will rise by about one foot. One state particularly invested in protecting its coast is Louisiana. Since the 1930s, the state has lost nearly 2,000 square miles of coastline. For comparison, that's about the size of Delaware. Now Louisiana's top coastal official says he's found a solution to the state's vanishing coastline. Reporter John Snell shows us how rocks could come to the rescue. On a random Friday morning in Grand Isle, the surf's up. Oh, it would just be beaten up against those caps right now. Charter Captain Mike Guidry says rocks installed in recent months provide a new layer of protection for camps. People always associate hurricanes with this destruction. Well, we have stronger cold fronts. In a fight for survival, Grand Isle over the years has deployed segmented rocks. The technique has a powerful believer in the state's top coastal official. This went through Ida. Gordon Dove, the chairman of the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority, wants to rock much of Louisiana's coast. Not some solid line of fortification, but rocks installed in segments. Currents and wave action carry sand and sediment, which make their way through gaps in the rocks and then get trapped as the waves recede. A bird's eye view shows how sand has built up in Grand Isle effectively extending this section of beach. As they rock everything, it'll start building back up. You can see what these rocks did in helping sustain some of this levee system. Versus a portion of the beach without the rocks. This is no rocks, Grand Isle. You can see how it tore it up. My vision is to rebuild the coast through segmented breakwater rocks from Texas to Mississippi. History shows us the proof that it works. Skeptics argue it doesn't always work. In many places, the land is so soupy, rocks simply sink. There's certainly places where we can continue to build that out, but it's not the one solution that works everywhere. Coastal scientist Alicia Renfro says they can be useful in some places, but cautions it's important to understand where rocks will work, where they won't, and why. The problem with our coast is that there isn't enough sediment, and so it just is not going to work every single place. But there are places like here on Grand Isle where it would work well. Part of it, she says, comes down to the simple geology of Louisiana, using a tool that doesn't naturally occur here. The thing about rocks is we don't have rocks here in Louisiana. We have to go other places to get rocks, and when you put it on our wet, muddy sediments, they sink over time. I disagree if you have a current offshore, they work. When you use them inshore, they strictly to stabilize. So wherever possible, it's actually great if we can use oyster reefs instead, use living shorelines that can also ask, act as those rock barriers, but they build upon themselves over time as sea level rises. There is no one size fits all solution. At the Rockefeller State Wildlife Refuge south of Lake Charles, rocks installed as shoreline protection sank under their weight. Refuge managers solved the problem by first laying down a lighter aggregate material, then covering it with rocks. A little ingenuity, which cost $10 million per mile. Louisiana has poured more than $1 billion into restoring barrier islands. Dove wants to rebuild more of the islands and shield them with segmented rocks. You gotta start by fortifying your defenses along your coastline. Charting this somewhat different course would not come cheap. By Dove's estimate, about one and a half billion dollars. Rising sea levels and storm surges have a South Carolina city revamping its strategy to prevent flooding. The city of Charleston says the plan involves tailoring policies down to the neighborhood level to address specific needs. The city says it's Charleston's first ever comprehensive look at flood risk management.